Welcome to a noob's guide to Festus. This is Festus, the Leech Lord. A fat green worshipper of Nurgle who has all the charm of a pimple popping video. He's so bloated and grotesque that CA took one look at him and decided they needed to break new creative ground for this absolute unit, so they made him Scottish. The ingredient was life! And it has so willingly come. A playable character in the Champions of Chaos DLC for Total War Warhammer 3, when he's not handing out smallpox infected blankets, Festus spreads plagues across the world with a joyful smile and a big old belly that shakes when he laughs like a bowl full of expired jelly. Why does that sound so familiar? You use that joke for Kugath. I need a new angle for Festus. Which one is he? The fat one. Greasus? No, the fat green one. Grom? The fat green Scottish one. Shrek? Welcome to a noob's guide to Festivus. This is Festivus, a still green but less hairy Grinch, with a heart three sizes too large from obesity. He's a jolly old fat man who travels the world sneaking into houses to give gifts to unsuspecting boys and girls. With his happy little helpers, he likes to craft each gift by hand and- You've used a sand and nurgle joke before too. Maybe no one will notice? Has the past taught you nothing? Welcome to a noob's guide to Festus, the wandering doctor. This is Festus, the oh wait, where'd he go? Ow. The mysterious apothecary Festus is quite the mad doctor, a devotee of the plague lord Nurgle, once he was a proud imperial physician of the highest caliber. From his office in Nordland, Festus operated as a skilled imperial chirurgeon. They're like a surgeon, but with less anesthesia and more leeches. Festus specialized in curative ointments and salves. For every medieval horror story of bleeding someone to cure a headache, there's a poultice of linseed flax that was used to draw the pus out of an abscess. Festus helped the people of Nordland overcome outbreaks of the Screaming Og, Blackleg, and even the crippling Ghoul Pox, most of which were defeated with the phrase, just cover your mouth when you cough. He likely also killed a few dozen as he didn't know about proper sanitization procedures, but it was still a net win. With his in-game cauldron mechanic, you too can mix up potions like a medieval apothecary, because even before he pledged to Nurgle, Festus could mix one hell of a medicinal Manhattan even increasing the growth rate of a city by mixing in a dash of horny goatweed, ginseng, maga root, yohembine, or whatever male enhancement herb ads you see whenever you browse the hub at 7 o'clock on a Friday night. None of them work, but it convinces people to try a bit harder, and that gets results. Any plagues you create with the cauldron mechanic are set and forget, spreading automatically between anything they touch, like well, a plague actually, and the ones Festus creates are especially hardy, lasting three turns longer thanks to his advanced courses in epidemiology. An observant person would have noticed that with each outbreak, the diseases seemed to be getting more aggressive and harder to cure, almost as if someone was getting annoyed with Festus's curative efforts and wanted to knock him back down a peg. But doctors can get so focused on their work, they'd miss orc cheerleaders swinging morning star titty tassels until they whacked them on the head. So when gnashing fever left every person in Salzen Moon running hotter than two rats going at it in a wool sock, Festus was stumped. Unwilling to admit defeat at the hands of nature, or Nurgle in this case, Festus quarantined himself until he could brew a curative elixir for this virulent pathogen. But when his last patient died and he still didn't have a cure, Festus dropped to his knees and cried out for help. But instead of his usual nurse with a short skirt and a slug of medicinal brandy, Hello, nurse! Nurgle himself responded. One by one, the slack-jawed corpses in Festus's hospice turned their heads to look at him. I can teach you for this and all if you will serve me. <laughs> oh, the voice is hard to do. Shit. Reasonable people would have left the room screaming at this point, but I've never known a doctor to even admit they're wrong, let alone say they don't have an answer to a question. So Festus was already as broken as they come, and in his desperation, he agreed. In the blink of a bloodshot eye, Festus's mind was filled with every detail of every sickness, ailment, and plague ever created by the Chaos God Nurgle. It also drove him completely mad, driving out what little compassion remained after his rounds at the medical school, which to be fair, wasn't much. 
In exchange, he gained access to spells from the lore of Nurgle and a whole suite of skills named after groan-inducing doctor puns. Seriously, each of these is a work of art and someone earned their Dad of the Year mug just for writing them. Normally at this point, the exalted champion of chaos would go to war in their god's name, swinging around a big axe and shouting their own name in the third person. But Festus was still a doctor, damn it. So he set to work as only a dark apothecary could, creating the Tinian Fellowship, an international organization dedicated to the study of rare and infectious diseases, diabolically offering free access to cutting-edge medical research to anyone who wanted it. The dastardly Dr. Festus even founded a chain of hospitals, evilly ensuring anyone in his care would receive the best treatment, free of charge. <laughs> Hold on, that's just universal health care. The Tinian Fellowship are even keen sponsors of public works and are particularly fond of projects that bring people closer together. Of course, the inner circle is devoted to the worship of Nurgle and constantly engage in unethical medical experimentation, even unleashing the occasional disease just so they can cure it. But what modern medical institution hasn't? Festus is quietly recruiting chirurgeons from across the Empire into what is actually a chaos cult, enticing them with correspondences and seminars on rare contaminations, then gently encouraging them to indulge in experimentation that contravenes established medical ethics. Because who wouldn't want to study under the renowned Mr. Festus? Dr. Evil! I didn't spend six years in evil medical school to be called Mr. Thank you very much. As Festus's influence grows, these erstwhile healers become the harbingers of disease, proving that the road to chaos corruption is actually paved with good intentions. In game, you get to keep the souls of anyone killed by Festus's plagues, storing them in a carefully labeled apothecary cabinet until they're ready to be devoted to Nurgle. These are spent on boons that let you summon squelching demons to further your global domination. So keep drowning the world in a pool of contagion and the bodies will continue hitting the floor. But as he grows more physically corrupt, he's becoming shy of human contact. You can hide boils and green skin with long sleeves, but a tentacle arm and giant chin goiter that looks like a diseased testicle raise questions. Though his curative powers are greater than ever, woe betide anyone who comes across the good doctor alone on the roads at night, a shuffling, muttering figure that stalks the lands in moth-eaten robes that gently clink with the vials of unimaginable concoctions which he is always seeking to test on anyone he can catch or deceive. Festus is always in need of new patients and not above force-feeding his latest concoctions to his victims in his quest to bring ever more repugnant forms of life into the world. He once unleashed a strain of eye slime fever so virulent that the sheer number of deaths it caused allowed a horde of demons to manifest and lay siege to Middendorf. And it should come as no surprise to you that the mortal champion of Nurgle and the Champions of Chaos DLC specializes in fielding warriors patroned by Nurgle. Champions of Nurgle are swollen, bloated, and often little more than slow-moving sacks of pus and infectious diseases that poison anyone they hit. Their bodies have been completely dulled to pain, and as such, they can endure immense amounts of damage before they die. Any vassals you create in your campaign will also gain poison attacks and spread Nurgle corruption. Any units in your armies, though, should count themselves as lucky, as Festus brings multiple healing spells, an AoE healing aura, and skills that raise his battle healing cap. Also, Festus can heal his armies like the proper physician he is. Or you can always go the exact opposite route and switch his in-battle ability from healing elixirs to harbinger of pestilence to damage nearby enemies in battle. Because generally, you'll have Festus right in the thick of it, performing triage on every fecundite around him. And yes, he knows what his faction name sounds like. Fecundity is really a measure of how quickly things reproduce, but its connotative coincidence with feces wasn't lost on the creative assembly who have never missed a chance for a poop joke. This combination of doughy demonic units and poison attacks alongside the heavy armor of the Warriors of Chaos make the Fecundite forces some of the toughest in the game. But they are slow. Most of these rot-bloated gas bags can barely walk, let alone swing a sword. When you play as Festus, fights against you are likely to linger on longer than a fart after a 7-Eleven chimichanga. Just remember not to stand downwind afterwards. But hey, as the good Herr Doctor will remind you, decay is a natural 
natural part of life. You can feed the fever or starve the cold, always mix your meds, and never ever eat an orange or an apple. And why yes, he does recommend antibiotics to fight a virus and is completely against the vaccinations, because being an agent of chaos through bad medical advice isn't limited to fantasy. And this has been a noob's guide to Festus the Leech Lord. Thanks for watching. Go ahead. Put that way at the camera. Ready, Mark? Like you're taking pictures. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Okay. One, Merry Christmas. two, three. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. You have to put the switch down for that. Okay. Put the switch down. Okay, Merry Mark. Christmas. Mark, look at the camera over here. Ready? One, two, three. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Good job. Same, same. Merry Christmas. Yeah, I know. I know you did. It's okay. Next time. <laughs>